Now let's continue our journey into HTML5's new features with form elements. So far we've discussed the new multimedia tags like audio, video, and everything else like iframes, objects, and embed tags. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into forms. So I created a new file here and I'm going to call this html5forms.html. That updated the preview. Quickly create an HTML file. Head with a body. And inside the head, I'm going to create a title, HTML5Forms. And inside the body, let's create a form element. We don't need this action attribute for now. And inside our form, let's create an input tag. So Emmett has suggested that we change our type from text to something else. Well, it turns out HTML5 added a lot of new different input types. There's naturally the plain text input that we've been working with so far, but there's also a type date. The type email, I'm gonna separate each of these with a break tag. And again, I'm just using shorthand Emmett here another break tag, and we also have an input type password. This is not HTML5, but just to let you know, entering information into a password input hides the actual input text. There's also an input of type time. A few more helpful input types include URL, and also a really cool input type called color. So let's quickly walk through each one and how it's helpful. And I'm gonna provide a description of each input using a label tag. And I'm gonna skip the for property and do a more traditional label notation where I have the input inside the label tag. And inside the label tag, I'm gonna say text input. And I'm gonna create another label tag here. And again, we don't need the for property, even though it is definitely good practice. And I'm gonna call this label a date input. Just to show you some of the features of date input, it comes with a built-in calendar and automatically selects the date for you based on that. You can manually increase or decrease each month with this little slider up here. Increase or decrease each day or each year. Text input naturally is a standard text input. Now let's create a label tag for an email input. And the great thing about email inputs are that they come with built-in validation right in HTML. It used to be that you would have to manually enter validation for email inputs, and you'd have to use JavaScript and regular expressions, which got really messy. You can even add a required property. And when submitting the form, again, we don't have a submit button here, but when submitting the form, it'll automatically provide some errors if either the email field isn't filled out or it's not properly formatted as an email. Note that browser compatibility does differ with email validation, but it is an HTML5 standard and most browsers support it to a significant extent. So now let's move on to password. This is pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't show your password in a password input. So I'm just gonna call this a password input. Now here's a time input. This one's pretty interesting, worth showing a feature. Add the closing label tag and remove the for property. Remember the for property references an ID. We haven't given any IDs to our inputs, so I'm just enclosing the inputs inside of our label tag. And the time input is also really neat, similar to the date input. We can cycle through hours up to 12, then we have minutes, and then we have AM, PM. These input types are especially useful for mobile devices because mobile devices have built-in sliders. Their keyboards change based on the input type. So if you wanna make your website mobile friendly, definitely use these different input types that are available for HTML5. With a URL input, you might think that not much is going on here, but the change is definitely noticeable on mobile devices, which format the keyboard differently if it's a URL. They add a .com as a key, like 
Apple's iPhone does. Now this color one is just really cool. You probably won't have too many opportunities to use this. If you do, then you're probably working on some type of design-related website. But this color input is just really cool because it allows you to select from various different colors. It creates this color wheel if you're on a Mac, allows you to select from certain sliders, RGB sliders, you know, you can change this color in different ways. It's just really cool, really neat. Its functionality does vary by operating system and by browser, but most browsers have some sort of built-in support for this type of color input. You can figure out a color's hex value. This is really cool and really helpful, especially when we get into CSS. If you want to have a color show up exactly like you're seeing it on a web page, it's a really cool feature and a really awesome input type. And there's one other input attribute I want to cover since we're on the topic of forms, and that's the autofocus. And the autofocus input, you know, you might think, oh, it doesn't really do much, but really it's when we refresh. Note that as soon as we refreshed, the cursor automatically focused onto this text element. If we had the autofocus tag on some other input, like the email input, and we saved and we refreshed our browser, the autofocus would go towards the email input instead. There is one other new input type I want to cover. In order to show it, we first need to actually create a separate tag called a data list. And inside a data list, let's give predefined options that we want our users to pick from. For this one, let's do cities and create an option for New York another option for London, a third option for Amsterdam, fourth option for Los Angeles, and a fifth option for Prague. Now we can reference this data list inside of an input by first giving it an ID property. Let's give it an ID of cities and then create an input. And instead of giving the input a type, let's have it reference a list and point to the ID of the data input. Now when we start typing, we see there's some autocomplete feature that's automatically enabled. Typing in an N shows New York, which it starts with, so it's naturally the first letter. But these other cities also have an N in them. London has an N, Los Angeles has an N. But naturally, we can also create a new city in case our city is not included in the option. So this is how you enable autocomplete inside of HTML. When it comes to user experience, autocomplete is a feature that you should try to enable as often as possible. And by user experience, I mean how easy it is for somebody to navigate through your website. There's a more detailed discussion about the differences between the user interface and the user experience, the UI and UX further in the course. But I just wanna give you a little bit of a precursor that features like autocomplete that you can enable inside of HTML should be included whenever they can because it just makes the user experience much easier. It makes your data much more consistent and makes it easier for your users to navigate through your website. So that's how you enable autocomplete inside of inputs. Now that we've shown all of the different types of inputs and all their cool features, that's a pretty comprehensive overview of the new form inputs and types available to you through HTML5.